Good afternoon and uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Lawrence Lever. I'm one of the consultant dermatologists here at 108 Harley Street. Um, as you know, we've introduced these um, short educational webinars with the aim of providing some um, uh, intense uh, information on, on a subject that we think is important. And our brief is to stick to 12 slides um, and to fit in our important messages in, in 20 minutes. And the organisers have asked me to mention that we're open to suggestions on any other topics that you might like us to cover in, in the future. I'm going to be talking about acne, which is one of the more common skin conditions that's seen in, in general practice in primary care, but also is, is referred to us. Um, and there isn't time really to talk about the differential diagnosis, the various other conditions that can affect the skin on the face, but really uh, the diagnosis of acne is usually pretty straightforward. Um, there are certain triggers, of course, being a teenager is, is the number one cause for developing acne. Um, and there are various explanations for that. Again, we won't go into that. Um, putting oily products on the skin is actually one of the major ways that you can make acne worse. And when teenagers and their parents come along and see me and they say, well, what can we do to make it better? I normally say it's going to be treatment, but what you can do to make it worse if you want to is to put something oily and greasy on the skin. Occasionally there are hormone disorders that can, can precipitate acne. Again, we won't go into detail here. Very few patients really need investigation, but if you think something's odd going is going on with the patient, then obviously that needs to, to be looked into. But it's worth remembering that some drugs uh, can cause acne. So if you see acne coming out of the blue in, in, in older patients, it's worth thinking about that. And of course, progesterone is again a trigger to make it worse. So the progesterone only pill, um, uh, progesterone implants, but even the, the Mirena coil uh, can seem to make acne worse in, in some people. Um, occlusion of the skin, friction seems to be a trigger and you'll probably be familiar with this term maskne or maskne that's, that's uh, hit the news recently. So we're seeing quite a lot of patients, and I'm sure you must be as well, who feel that their skin has been made worse by, by wearing a mask in these lockdown times. I want to point out that there are different types of acne and it's important when the patients come to look closely at the skin because the treatment does depend to some extent on what you can see. So here you can see a forehead covered in little bumps. If you get close up and look at the skin with a magnifying glass, and I'd always recommend that, um, you'll see that these are comedones. These are, these are white heads. Uh, so these are closed comedones. Sometimes you see blackheads, but comedones, whiteheads and blackheads are what we call non-inflammatory lesions. And these respond to a treatment which is used to unblock the pores, really. Uh, whereas inflammatory acne seen here is, is different. And you can see that there are red, lumpy spots deep under the skin, often described as being painful. And this kind of acne nearly always needs systemic treatment as well as, as something topical. We'd always combine the two. Um, acne along the jawline is, is a particularly stubborn problem. It's often seen, I say older women, it sounds like it's old women, but it, girls over the age of 20 sometimes get acne starting for the first time along the jawline. And often they will say that it's hormonal, it comes on before their periods and gets better. Some of those patients may have uh, a condition such as PCOS, but the majority don't. And to be honest, although they may be investigated to see if they've got PCOS and there may be reasons for, for wanting to do that, to be honest, the treatment of the, of the acne is much the same. When we see patients with acne, it's important not just to reach for the prescription pad, but to think about the things that can be advised that will help the skin. So I've already said about uh, avoiding too much oil on the skin. Um, uh, the skin should be washed with something gentle. There's a tendency for some people with acne to feel that if they can only clean and scrub and cleanse, 
sufficiently that that will stop them getting spots but that's not the case the more you cleanse and scrub the more the skin gets red and dry um, and then it makes the skin intolerant of some of the topical things that we might, might want to use. Diet, well I don't see that there are patients who can be improved by changing their diet but if a patient says that they believe that their spots are made worse by eating chocolate or eating too many crisps, then it does no harm to encourage a healthy diet and say, well, that's fine, then you should leave those things off. But you, you can't uh, make a significant difference to acne by changing the diet. And that's been looked at in studies going back for, for, for decades. Um, there are lots of over-the-counter products that are designed to uh, to make acne better, cosmeceuticals, so-called uh, tea tree oil. And these products actually do have a little bit of evidence, or some of them do, that they help a bit. But generally speaking, they're not that effective and not as effective as, as the prescribed drugs. Um, girls are allowed to wear makeup. I think it's uh, wrong to say to, to, to people that they've got bad skin, therefore they mustn't wear makeup. I think that's that's unfair, but it needs to be oil free because, as we said, oil based foundation will make spots worse, but oil free makeup would, would be no problem. Um, the other thing is that, that people often feel that they mustn't touch the skin. And in general, of course, we don't want to pick on, on the right day. You'll see someone with excoriated acne, huge scabs and scratches, and that's a kind of psychological complication of, of acne is that people get cross with their skin and they pick and poke. So clearly that's wrong. But if there's a big white pustule that's about to pop and somebody wants to just squeeze it very gently while looking in the mirror, they're not going to do that skin any harm. Um, at this point, I also just want to mention the Acne Support Group. This is um, a website set up by the British Association of Dermatologists. And there are a number of dermatologists there talking about different aspects of acne. Um, and for those of you that are not particularly um, au fait with cosmetics and general skincare advice, then uh, for young women in particular, if you steer them towards that, they may well find that there's some useful background there that you uh, uh, would want them to know, but you don't have the, all the answers for them. So that's the acne support group. So. Going on to treatment, this is of course where most doctors start. They say, right, what can I give you for your skin? And mostly we can manage uh, mild to moderate acne uh, in primary care with this selection of, of treatments. So the most old fashioned topical treatment, the ones that contain benzoyl peroxide are widely available over the counter. I find them not terribly effective, but they're very safe. So if you had, you know, a 11, 12 year old with the tiniest little bit of acne and the parents want you to do something and you want something gentle and safe, then a bit of benzyl peroxide gel at night uh, would do no harm and may actually work to, to settle things down. Um, if the skin is very inflamed and red and angry, then a lot of the topical treatments are going to make it worse. So if you put benzyl peroxide on inflammatory acne, people will usually stop after a few days and say it burnt my skin. And that may also go for the retinoid and retinoid like agents. So although microbiologists don't like the use of topical antibiotics because they worry about antibiotic resistance and so on, Actually, for this group with very inflammatory acne, the, the topical antibiotic products may be perfectly appropriate. And if it's not too severe, then that could be prescribed to use regularly over several months to, to, to calm things down. For the comedones, though, antibiotics are not going to make any difference. And we need to use something that's going to unblock the pores. And so this means really a topical retinoid or a retinoid-like agent, that's a dapolene that's in these products, treclin or Differin or Epiduo. Um, I'll come to how those are used in a bit more detail in, in a moment. Uh, we also have azelaic acid, which is available in the cream, and that's I use for people whose skin is very sensitive. It's quite gentle. I don't think it's that effective, but it's a, a useful treatment as a way in, perhaps, for people whose skin is, is 
very uh, reactive and doesn't take topical treatments very well. Oral treatment, of course, um, is uh, very necessary in more severe acne and in inflammatory acne with a lot of widespread spots, particularly if it's on the trunk, because people aren't going to manage acne all over their back with a, with a topical product. Um, so that's usually one of the tetracyclines. As you know, oxytetracycline is very cheap and it's been around for years, but we usually use the once a day uh, products, limocycline, doxycycline. Um, it's much easier to take and, and effective. And again, I'll come to that in a bit more detail. And of course, for young women, uh, one of the skin friendly pills, for example, Yasmin or Silest or a whole range of others, um, can be useful, particularly if they were going to go on the pill anyway, because some pills, like we've said, the mini pill will make acne worse. Some of the combined pills will make acne better. So it's worthwhile uh, talking about that in, in young women. But of course, there is the potential for, for side effects. Um, whichever treatment you use, you need to be, I think, available to review progress at regular intervals. Um, I, I don't think you can send someone off and say, well, that's it you know, you're cured now, you don't have to come back because the treatment is going to be going on for months and months, if not years. And there may be side effects, adverse effects from the treatment. Um, and so ideally, I would like to see patients after we've started treatment within about a month, not because I expect the skin to be much better, but just to make sure that they understand what they're doing and they're tolerating it and they're going to stick with it. And photos are useful because it's very hard to remember what the skin was like um, several months down the down the line or even weeks down the line. So patients will always be taking photos. So don't dismiss them. Let them bring their photos and show you how, how they're doing. And obviously, if they're not responding to treatments or they're not tolerating the treatment, then we need to do something different. So here it's rather a busy slide, but I just want to talk you through the important things that you need to get across to a patient if you're going to start them on treatment. So on the right, there's a picture of somebody with a mixture of inflammatory, comedonal acne. So we're going to throw some treatment at this, but we need to say to them, first of all, remember to stop using anything oily on the skin. There's no point in putting on E45, Nivea, it's all going to make it worse. Uh, they want to wash with something gentle. So um, normal soap is fine, a gentle cleanser, but nothing too harsh to scrub at the skin because that just makes it red and sore. They need to put a thin layer of the product over the affected area, not just dabbed on one spot at a time. In the morning, they wash it off and that's all they need to do. But we need to say to them that the treatment is not designed to make spots disappear quicker. It's designed to prevent new spots. And that's important because obviously people need to understand what they're trying to achieve, because if they think that by putting the cream on the spot, it's going to be gone in two days, then two days later when it hasn't worked, they will stop the treatment. And I always say to them with topical treatment, it will take at least a month to even start working. There will be dryness of the skin. It will make the skin peel and they need to be expecting that. And if it gets too dry or it peels too much or it makes the skin sore, then they need to be told to stop the treatment, let it settle down and start again. So if the skin's dry, they reduce the frequency or they can use an oil-free moisturizer. Um, I won't go into the details of what they are, but they're available um, or both. And they need to tell you if there are side effects, but they should keep going even if it's going slowly. All of the treatments or most of the topical treatments and all of the oral medications make the skin sensitive to the sun. So they need to be told just to take it gently with the sun. Um, if they're on tablets, limocycline, doxycycline, I say to them it will take at least three months to even start working. And again, that's important because many of the patients say, oh, I've tried everything. I was given limocycline for a month, that didn't work. I was given doxycycline for a month, that didn't work. It's never going to work in that time. They need to be told it's three months before it even starts to work. And it may be six months or even longer before they get the full benefits. And I'm quite happy for people to take photos so that they can see very slow progress because if it's going the right direction, they'll be happy to carry on. And it needs to be reviewed and they need to be seen at intervals because obviously it's a, it's a long haul. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say when do you refer to us? Well, if it's not doing what it's supposed to do and you don't know what to do, then clearly we should see them. And with severe acne, so with nodular cystic acne, with acne conglobata, 
um, then they need to be referred sooner rather than later. So if somebody's got very severe nodulocystic acne and you think they're going to need Roaccutane, they may as well be referred. If we disagree and we say, well, no, actually that's not suitable, then that's fine. Then we can start them on a more gentle treatment. But it, it, it seems a great shame for somebody with very severe acne to have to go through six months, a year of treatment that's just not going to work before, before they get referred. I won't go into any real detail with, with Roaccutane, but as you know, this is a strong drug because uh, and is available only to specialists because of the various side effects. It needs to be monitored, liver function tests, lipids. There are lots and lots of nuisance side effects. So with antibiotics, most people don't get side effects. With isotretinoin, everybody gets side effects. Um, and sometimes they're quite serious and the drug needs to be stopped, but usually we can manage it by being knowing what to do with you know, the various nuisances when they develop. Um, the acne may flare up a bit during the first month, so they need to be warned about that. And of course, it's highly teratogenic, so it's totally unsuitable, really, for young women of childbearing age. We do use it, but we have to use uh, lots of contraception, lots of advice, regular pregnancy tests, and it's always a worry, but we, we get through it. Um, I put cured in six months in inverted commas. It will be fantastic. Fantastic. The, the patients with severe acne do really well. They are very grateful, but they will still need ongoing supervision and care because the skin won't be 100% normal. They will still be at risk of developing odd spots, so they need to be supervised afterwards, at least for a while. The patients who do least well with Roaccutane are the ones that have relatively mild acne because they, they tend to be disappointed because the people that have mild acne they're treated with Roaccutane, at the end of it, they've still got mild acne, they feel it's, it's failed. There are times when we use Roaccutane in patients with acne where it's not that severe, where it's gone on for a long time, where other treatments have failed, but it, 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 it sometimes ends up with a disappointed patient. Acne conglobata, thankfully, is quite rare. This is where all the spots under the skin join up into huge, great lumps. This is a real emergency. Patients need to be treated with steroids, with prednisolone to calm it down first, and then the Roaccutane. And there's a real danger of making that worse with Roaccutane, uh, and so that needs to be, to be handled very carefully. There are some other drugs that you'll be aware of that we sometimes use, other antibiotics, spironolactone as an antiandrogen, sulfotron acetate as an antiandrogen, but I don't think that's for, for, for this talk. Um, so this is my last slide. So I'm just going to run through what I think is important again. Treatment needs to be timely, by which I mean we shouldn't allow the skin to get so bad that it becomes uh, scarring if possible. When we start the treatment, we need to manage expectations. They need to know that it's going to take a while to start working, that there will be some nuisance side effects of the treatments. If it makes it dry or it peels, that's a good sign. If it makes it go red or get sore, that's also a good sign. It shows it's a strong treatment. We just need to reduce the frequency. It's amazing the number of people who come along and say, oh, I was given that uh, Dapoline gel. It burnt my skin. I can't use that. Well, actually, if they've been told at the beginning that they should start off gently and maybe reduce the frequency if it got dry, they would have actually tolerated it and done very well. So managing expectations, talking about the time frame, and remembering that treatment will have to be continued. So it's not that the course of treatment is three months and then they finish. This is a, a long term thing, usually for a year or two in one form or another. And as far as possible, we want to monitor their progress, support them. I know it's difficult to find the time for, for everyone, but these patients do much better if there's someone who's showing interest in, in them and, and, and helping them along. And as I've said, if they're not doing well, then uh, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, to find, you know, an alternative treatment if necessary by, by referring them. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I've been asked to uh, remind you that you should send in any questions or queries by email. I'll be happy to uh, respond to those over the next uh, week or so. Um, and um, I think that's it for now. Thank you very much.